Hi everyone, March 2024, this bulletin is out and this is the video where we do the analysis on it. As you know, in this channel we talk about green card categories in which you can self-petition and that means that you don't have to have a job offer, a labor certification, a sponsor, and you can even do it without a lawyer, saving a lot of money. In this channel we specifically talk about EB20W and EB1A green card category. So if you were hoping to find out what's going on with other categories, this is probably not your video, so I'm sure you can find a better one for your interest. So without mm, going on and on and on about the introduction, let's move to my other screen so we can see what's going on with the visa bulletin. And the first thing you need to know is how to get here. You just need to Google visa bulletin and the first result will take you to this website from travel.state.gov and that is the official website from the Department of State. You will find on the left side the current month, we are now in February, and at some point during that month they release the new visa bulletin for the upcoming month and that's what you see on the right side, in this case March, March 2024, which has been released on the 9th of February, so today it, it, it has just been released, okay? So what I like to do is I like to open both of them in two tabs so we can easily compare and we can go from one to the other. What I do is I skip the family sponsor preferences, the family green cards, uh, we don't really cover those in this uh, channel, so I'm going down to employment-based preference and I stop in table A. And I'm going to do the same for uh, March, I'm going to skip it so... But first, what is table A before we actually get into table A? Table A is the final action dates and that is the most important table for all of you guys that are interested to know what is going to happen with the green card that, that you are applying for. Table A dictates when is your turn to actually get a visa number, when is a visa number available to you? Okay, so that really tells you when your process will be finished, when you are able to complete the whole process, the, the, the very end of the process. Then we have table B, we're going to talk about it in a second once we get there. And that is not so important, but it may be important for those of you who are filing for an adjustment of status. So let's go back to table A. So in February, for the category EB1, which is, uh, and let me zoom in a little bit, the category EB1 is, uh, includes EB1A and we have been seeing how there is a C which means current, that is the best situation, it means there's no wait time, there's no backlog and um, that is the situation we had had for a while but China had a date of July 2022 and India had a date of September 2020. Those two countries are typically a little bit more affected by backlogs because there is more demand and as you know, there is a quota per country quota system for these green cards. So what does this table mean? Uh, if you see a date here, it means that you need to, um, in order to finish the process, your priority date needs to be earlier than the date shown in this table. If your date is later than this date, then you cannot complete the process. So. This was the situation in February, current for most countries, July 2022 and September 2020 for China and India. So if we move to, to February, we see that we continue with a C uh, for most countries. And then we have July 2022, just an advancement of two weeks for China and October 2020, which is one month advancement for India. So very, very little change there. For EB2, which includes the famous and popular EB2 NAW, we had a, prior, um, a date of November 15th, 2022 for most countries, and that date advances only one week to November 22nd, 2022 for most countries. And then we had China and India with a date of 2020 and 2012 for India, and basically uh, it's pretty much the same, it's exactly the same, so no changes there. So really in table A, out of EB1 and EB2, mm, 
we are seeing very, very tiny advancements in EB2 one week for most countries, and then in EB1, a little bit of advancement for China and India. I want to repeat what I said in my video that I did for visibility in February, visibility in the previous month. And that is that when we see an advancement of one week only, or two weeks only, that is not really good news. Even though dates are moving forward, which is always <laughs> good, um, is not the best situation because think about it. One month has passed sin since they released the previous visa bulletin, the February visa bulletin. So we would expect to see at least one month movement forward. If that doesn't happen, that is effectively um, a backlog happening, even though it, you know, it's, it's not like they are moving backwards, but they are moving slower than the actual time. And that really means that the situation is getting worse. It's not getting terrible, but it's not good news. We also know that this year USAS is advancing or making changes to the visa bulletin in a quarterly basis. So even though there are small changes like what we are seeing in this month, it won't be until the April visa bulletin when the quarter changes, when we should expect to see or we should hope to see more changes than, than in this month. And now let's move to table B. So uh, table B um, may be relevant for those of you who are in the US filing an adjustment of status. But to know that, to know when you can file an adjustment of status, sometimes you can use table B, sometimes you have to use table A, you have to click on this link that you see after table B is presented. You have this link here. You click on that, you say it, go, and then it tells you what chart you have to look at to know when you can file your adjustment of status. So for the next month, unfortunately, is not published. So I'm probably going to wait and insert the information uh, in a bit once once they publish it, because this month um, we are now in, in a territory where, where they may switch from table B to table A. So I want to provide that information. Uh, but what we are seeing here for the current month of February is that for employment-based uh, preferences, you could use table B, dates for filing. And that is typically better for the applicant because those dates are more favorable. But we'll have to wait and see what is the decision on next month, March. I don't know why, but they <laughs> most of the times they are delayed and they don't publish this information until a little bit after they publish the visa bulletin. It seems that they are not coordinated. Well, guess what? They are taking too long. I want to upload this video, so I'm going to upload it without that information. So you need to go and check if you can file based on table A or table B in March 2024 if you are doing an adjustment of status. So let's take a look at table B first, and then uh, I'll check what happened with, with this. In, in February, we had a uh, current for most countries for EB1, of course, and then China and India had January 2023 and January 2021, uh, respectively. So let's see what happened in March. We have current for most countries, January 2023, January 2021 for China and India, respectively. So it, it is exactly the same situation. For EB2, we had a date of February 15th, 2023 for most countries, which is, again, this exact same date we will have in March. And then we had June 2020 and May 2012 for China and India, respectively, for EB2. And surprise, surprise, we have the same date for those two countries as well. So once again, uh, or even worse in Table B, there's no change whatsoever. There have been no advancement. There have been no uh, worsening of, of the situation. But remember that when it comes to Visa Bulletin, no change is actually a bad change because time has passed, one month passes, and uh, dates don't move. So that is not really the best situation. So what is your opinion on this? Are you frustrated? Are you sad? Are you happy that we had at least a week of advancement in Table A for EB2, which includes EB2 and AW? What is your take on this visa bulletin? Please let me know in your, uh, in your comments below. And as usual, 
please take a look at my websites ev28w.info and ev1greencard.info. In those websites, you can find a lot of information for do-it-yourself petitioners like yourself. So um, take a, a look at them. And above all, what I recommend is to check my online courses. Here on the screen, you have the information for the EB20W online course, the course curriculum. Those are the modules that I include. But in each module, you will find several lectures. And the lectures cover everything from requirements, how to fulfill the requirements, how to put together your cover letter, your professional plan, your recommendation letters, and you can submit questions in each lecture. So I will get back to you usually within a day. But now we are even doing live sessions each month where you can come, we can see face to face, and you can ask me questions as well uh, in a live session. So take a look at that and I, I think you won't be disappointed. And as usual, thank you so much for being here. Once again, thank you for subscribing, for sharing this channel with others. Thank you for checking my Spanish channel if you speak Spanish. And thank you for being here. Good luck in your EB20W or EB1A green card journey.